Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Talk with the Saw right here on Superlative Radio. Uh, this week, Dylan and I are going to be talking about uh, the season finale to season two of The Mandalorian. What? And yeah, and we are going to be talking about uh, episode 10 of uh, season three of Star Trek Discovery, which is Terra Firma part two. That's right. And uh, that's that's what we're going to be talking about. And um yeah, I mean, there's some. Oh, there's so much to talk about. Let's start with the Mandalorian because I'm just. I don't know about you, but I've been chomping at the bit to talk about it since I watched it. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Um, so, uh, really, honestly, if you have not seen the episode yet, then stop because I don't want to ruin this for you because yeah. it, it is really we good. We do spoils so and it, it, there is going to be big time. So, if you haven't seen it, just. Pause this. Go watch it, then come back and yeah, okay, because that's your warning right there. That's it. We're we're into spoiler territory <clears throat> now because it was just kick ass. So uh, Mando goes around to build a team to infiltrate Moth Gideon's uh, uh, bite a mic uh, star destroyer, <laughs> and um, he uh, he gathers. Of course, he gets Bogatan and uh, one of the other Mandalorian chicks. Uh, mm-hmm. That was with her. He gets, uh, of course, he's got um, Cara Dune, and yep, he's got, right. of course, Boba Fett and uh, Segura or whatever her name is. The other, the other girl. Yeah, so, I forget what her name so is. They but, all, yeah. the, the, they go, and uh, basically, they hatch this plot on how they're going to get on to his onto Moth Gideon's uh, Star Destroyer, and they manage to do that, and they make their way. In, through basically assaulting it. And they do a pretty good job. They're not bad. Um, not as bad as later. Yeah. But. And, uh, of course, he's got uh, what are called third-generation dark troopers uh, on the uh, on the ship. Yep. And um, they're, they're trying to get to the bay where they are before they can be activated and then jettison them into space so that they're not a threat because dark troopers are basically indestructible. They're like... If you watch uh, Terminator 2, they're like the T-1000, basically. Yeah, they're more like or less. pretty much, they just non-stop. And, of course, uh, just as Mando gets gets there, of course, they activate, and the doors start to open, and one of them gets One gets out. through, yep. Man, and he gets the ever <laughs> hell beat out of him by it. He gets a good one. He gets a but good beating. But he does beat it. Yep. Finally. Um, just the whole fact where it's punching him in the head. Yeah. It's doing nothing to him because <laughs> of his know. helmet, but it's pounding him into the wall. Dink. Yeah. Dink. 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 Yeah. Dink. <laughs> Finally, he uses his thing and just gets yeah. right up under. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's really cool. And then of course you see the others. They're they're just going through left, right, and center, taking out stormtroopers like crazy. Um, having like no shooting problem fish with them. in a barrel. Really. I like how when Cara Dune's weapon, she's like, mm. bang. That should do it. <laughs> I think that fixed it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, she had that big, heavy, repeating blaster, and that was that was really cool. She just just <laughs> watched them die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, and of course, they were going, of course, to rescue Grogu. And um, so, uh, at the very end, Mando, Mando, does, well, not at the very end, but towards the end, Mando gets to Grogu's cell, and of course, as he goes in, in stands Moth Gideon with the dark saber pointed at Grogu. He yep. tells him, look, I don't care. Keep the saber. Keep your ship. I don't. I just want yep. the kid. He goes to give it to him. When he does, he attacks Mando. They get into a fight. Mando eventually, of course, beats Moth Gideon. And uh, he tripped. He tripped. Did he knock the camera? Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. All fixed. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah. So, anyway, he, uh, you know, he basically, he, he does beat Moth Gideon, uh, takes him up to the bridge where the others are and um finds out of course that the dark saber uh he goes to just give it to bogatan and moth gideon's laughing about how oh you can't she has to take it in combat and he's like fine i yield yep. nope it has to be blah 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 which is complete baloney in regards to what happened in star wars rebels because in star wars rebels um What's his name? Uh, uh, da, 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 the character in Rebels. Um, frick. Why can't I remember his name? Ezra. Ezra found the Darksaber and he gave it to Bogatan. 
he just gave it to her and she took it and then she eventually lost it in combat to moth gideon now maybe that was why maybe she just wanted to i don't know but the, the whole sake that she can only take it by beating him in combat was didn't have to happen because it had been given to her once mm. before so <clears throat> well maybe that's why it didn't ensue another battle i don't know what happened to it after because we i don't remember seeing no i don't think they said because it just <clears throat> kind of end shortly yeah. thereafter but um so of course they're all in there and, and then they realize the dark troopers are back on the ship because they yep. all just had jet boots basically and they fly back <clears throat> on and they uh they start st- towards the bridge a whole and, crap load um, of them too there's a whole lot of them yeah a little division of them which yep. is like about I don't know, 40 or 50 yeah and um so they're all standing there on the bridge and they got the blast door sealed as they're pounding their way through and they're like, oh, and then all of a sudden, of a sudden. an X Wing comes out of hyperspace, and they're like, oh, look, an X Wing. And Cara Dune's like, oh, great, one X Wing. Yay, we're saved. Mm. Not realizing who it was. Who it was. So the X Wing, of course, lands on Gideon's ship. You see a hooded figure get out, start walking towards the bridge. Then a green lightsaber ignites, and this big old hack fest. It's basically Luke Skywalker, and he comes hacking through all these dark. Troopers, like nothing. Like, like Darth Vader did going down the end of uh, Rogue One when he was going through the hallway full of rebels. Yeah. <laughs> Almost the exact same kind of stuff, too. Um, there's actually a spot where, I don't know if you noticed, but when Luke's battling all the dark troopers, he actually goes, whoosh, brings his lightsaber like this and deflects a shot. And it's the exact same move Anakin did in, um, I believe it was Revenge of the Sith. Really? Okay. Yeah, no, his, I didn't catch his, that one. His, his movements were almost completely on par with how his father fought. It was really cool. And uh, so, of course, he finally gets to the end and, you know, the doors the doors open and Luke walks in and, uh, you know, he, he goes to get Grogu and Grogu at first is kind of, you know. Skittish. Skittish, but. Uh, of course, Mando picks him up, and uh, well, Din Jarjin, uh, he you know takes his helmet off and he shows his face to Grogu, which is really cool. And you know he tells him to go with Luke that he'll be safe. And of course, Luke gives his word that he'll protect him. And yep. R two comes in, and oh, it was good to see R two. You know, and it's really cool. So then Luke goes off with with uh, baby Yoda or Grogu, and um, that's uh, that's the last we see of them. And uh, then if you guys watch right to the end of the credits, at the end of the credits, there's an after the credits scene where you see uh, Boba Fett and uh, the girl that's been traveling around with him. Um, I can't remember her name, but uh, they go into Boba Fett's palace and basically kill everybody there and take over. (laughs) It's pretty cool. Um, Because Boba Fett's getting a series next December. It's called The Book of Boba Fett. And... uh, Yep, you were saying that off air. Mando's... Season three will be next year as well. So anyway, yeah, so that was how it ended. I thought seeing Luke again, I mean, especially the way they... They, they, they de-aged they, him they really de-aged well, too. Him. I mean, they got another actor to do the stand-in part, but they... Um, put his face over put it. put his face, a, a de-aged Mark Hamill's face over his face. They did a really fantastic job. They did. But it was great to see Luke again. And, yeah, it uh, was... Uh, see him as a really true Jedi master, just like... <laughs> lightsaber and his ass way through the, everything it was pretty cool it was awesome to yeah, see it was really really cool yeah so and it again it feels like the old star wars so oh, it has that ever. yeah like, so it's that... so it's good to it's good to have that old feeling again you know yeah. where it's not you know and you were also saying that uh off air that that basically now allows them to take out the trash yeah well i mean I, I, I'm going to gather that given the way they're handling things and the, the direction they're taking things, I'm I'm hoping that means what they're going to do is they're going to remove the sequels, we just wipe them out. Because um, when you look at the sequels and you find out what happened, you know, uh, Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren basically destroyed luke's luke's uh jedi academy and supposedly they killed everybody well i mean i highly doubt they would have been able to kill a a character like grogu um because he's so talented in the ways of the force already that it at that point after having years of luke's training 
wouldn't have been. He wouldn't have been any slouch. He would have, you no. know. I just, I don't. I think what it's going to do is it's going to allow them to wipe out the sequel trilogy because I think they realize that they made a mistake with them because there's no coherence to them. Like, you know, the Force Awakens wasn't necessarily that bad of a movie in the sense that had they kept on the path they were going with that movie, like you got to remember when. When that movie was made, right, like like they originally had three people coming in to each do a different one of the movies. So there was, of course, there was J.J. Abrams and there was Ryan Johnson right. and then there was, um, what's his face from the uh, Jurassic World series, the director of that. He oh. was the one who was going to do, I can't remember his name, but he was the one who was going to do the third one, right? And there originally was a pl- like kind of a, a basic plot. Um, and of course, that that's what, J.J. Abrams had started it on was this basic plot. But when Ryan Johnson came in, of course, he took everything J.J. did and he just tossed it out the window. Like, he just literally tossed it right out. Um, What's the guy's name? Oh, Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, Colin Trevorrow was supposed to do the third one. And, you know, he just just tossed it out. Thanks, Marky G. Thanks, Mark. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, he just tossed it all out, you know, like with that whole shot of Luke throwing the lightsaber over the He's on it, isn't he? Yeah, Yeah, he's good. You know, he just... That was what we'll keep was. him around for another week. And then by the time they got to the third one, like I've said before when we've talked, I mean, yeah. J.J. trying to course correct what had happened and fix things and oh, make geez, it make it's sense. impossible to. I mean, I don't care for J.J. as you guys probably have been watching well know, but I don't envy what his job was because there was no way he was going to be able to fix it at that point. It, no. was, it was just totally was, ruined. So uh, I'm guessing that what's going to happen is if they're smart, they're just going to erase them and just say these are – these are the sequels from an alternate, because now that they've introduced... I um, think they can reshoot them and redo them? Well, yeah. Be, well, they've introduced They've introduced in Star Wars now, um, they've introduced, uh, uh, they introduced it in Rebels, but they introduced a way to do time travel and alternate realities and whatever. So, I mean, it's it's fully possible that they could, you know, they could do that and they could... You know, just say, well, these are the sequels. If it had happened in this direction, this is what would have happened. But now this is, I mean, I don't know. But I just, I think logically if Disney was smart, because I mean, they know now after these three movies were made, like none of the merchandise sells from them. Mm-hmm. None of it. Like You, you, you said you that go, a few times. You yeah. go into any Toys R Us. Um, now, I know in the U.S. you guys don't have Toys R Us like we do anymore. But um, here in Canada, you go into a Toys R Us and you look and I mean, it's like, Star Wars stuff, if it's from the sequels, it just litters the shelves. It, original series stuff... Still goes. Or The Mandalorian... Yeah. Blows out the friggin' hell. Even the prequels sell better than the sequels. I mean, you know, when you see a Jar Jar Binks figure selling before, like, a Rey or a Kylo Ren figure, that's telling you something. Yeah. Um, but, like, that's what I mean. You go in and you see, like, the, 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 the prequels, the originals, Mandalorian, Rogue One... Solo, all those movies are selling better than the than the yeah. That's, you know, that, that's Rebels, a, all those things they're selling better. Clone Wars, like all that stuff sells way better than that's the a good. That's a good judge of how yeah. people think of it, really. It's, um, like everybody says, oh, but the Force Awakens made X amount of money. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the thing is, is the Force Awakens was the first Star Wars movie in like ten years. Yeah, they could have literally shit on a plate and called that Star Wars. They were and hungry. People would have gone to see it yeah. because it was Star Wars. Yeah. They were that hungry. You know, like, and like I said, overall, it wasn't really that bad. It just would have been better had they stuck with the same way that the That's story right. had been going. Yeah. So, if they'd followed the the road that they were yeah. on and tried, so not I mean, tried to, it, it yeah. is what it is, right? So hopefully the 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 way that they are doing the Mandalorian and some of these other shows oh, yeah. that, that are going to come, Mandalorian really feels, yeah. Like hopefully that means that what they're going to do then is they're going to be able to redo the history so that it's it's actually that much would better. be nice. You know, I'd be I mean, in for that. Yeah, me too. So anyway, I mean overall, so season two of Mandalorian overall, how what'd you think? Oh. Three thumbs up, baby. Oh, I know, eh? Wasn't that friggin' awesome? Un- just unbelievable. Unreal. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm already I mean, just, hungry for more. Just to get to see, like, just to get to see some of of what we got to saw. Like, to see a live action Ahsoka was so cool. Just to get to see Luke again. To You know, to see R2. To see, yeah. you know, I'm not a big Boba Fett fan, but I know there's lots of them out there. To see Boba Fett again, you know, like... 
it's to all, see how cool. cool the Mandalorian actually was, to see the kind of person he was, you know, and what he did, and yeah, like it just, you know, and of course Grogu was awesome. So. Yeah, of course that was, you know, yeah. but yeah, it's 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 really good to get back to the. I'm disappointed we got to wait a whole year for more. Well, yeah, obviously, but like frig, really, I mean, these shows are only eight episodes long or six episodes long. Yeah, that, to I me, that's not a season, that, really, that's, but. That's, even still, that means we should be seeing things like every six months at least, right? We, it, we shouldn't have to wait a whole year for more. Well, I mean, I mean maybe they're, they're not giving us a full season, so we shouldn't have to wait a whole year. Like, well, maybe the actors are doing other things too, and maybe they're, you know, there's probably stuff going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. But, you know, for all intent and purpose, when they, uh, they signed the contracts, they should have, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't it know. is all, what it is. All I'm saying is, I don't think it's right. I mean, Netflix makes shows, and their original series that get made, we don't have to wait generally a year between them. It's usually roughly every four to six months that a new season is released. Well, no, you know? because Stranger Things has been waiting for the next season for feels like quite a while. Well, that could be because of the pandemic, but in general, you don't like. I remember like Orange Is the New Black has like seven seasons. Yeah. And that aired over a period of like three and a half years. Yeah. I watched the like first it's... two and I got and I got tired of it. But <clears throat> No, but I mean whether you got tired of it or not has no bearing on no, how long no. it took them to make True. it. That's what I'm saying. And <clears throat> a lot of their series are like that. Yeah. It's like six months, new new season drops. Six months, a new season drops. And that's all it should be. It shouldn't be like, oh man. Now, of course, um, just before we get into Discovery, speaking of Disney Plus seasons and whatever, of course, like I said, WandaVision starting in January. Yep. Um, 15th, you said? Yep. yep. January 15th. So with WandaVision, what, what's going to happen is that's, that's part of their multiverse, uh, their multiverse trilogy that they're doing, which is going to be, it's going to start with WandaVision, continue into the next Spider-Man, which is next year. And then it's going to end in Doctor Strange. That's how the story is going to evolve is over those three things. So, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that cool. should be something to see. So be neat. Um, but anyway, let's move on to Discovery. And wah! Yeah. Ah! Wah! There it is. There it is. Yep. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Discovery. Uh, Terra Firma Part 2. We got to see what happened with Philippa Giorgio. Yep. Through the... Rock she goes. Yep. And we do find out in this episode that that was the Guardian of Forever yep. from the original series, which hasn't been seen on screen since the original that's series. That's right. Exactly. So. But, and, uh, uh, but yeah, so that's who he was and uh, takes her and goes back. Now, you were saying you think it's going to go back to the so, time of Picard. So, um, of course, you know, the episode mostly takes place on Terra in the alternate, uh, in the mirror universe in the past. And, um, then when Giorgio comes back, uh, it is where it ends, but he, he open he tells her like, you know, um, the only way to save you is to, you need to go back to a time when the prime and the mirror universes were still aligned before they had split which was what had been said in the last episode that yep. those started to, they had started to diverge. Um, so that's before the year 2600 because that happened before the temporal uh, the temporal cold war and the temporal war and all that. Um, so that being said, the prevailing rumor that I think is probably where they're going to lead it is because she's supposed to head up a section 31 TV series, which they announced a couple years ago but haven't gotten to yet, um, is that she's going to go back to the early 25th century in the timeline of Picard, where Star Trek Picard is taking place, and that's where it will be because the, the, the universes at that point were still aligned. They were still... So... Um, so does that mean we'll get another Picard? Well, they're still saying there's going to be a season two. We're just supposed mm -hmm. to come out in 2021, but... I don't, know, I don't know, no word. Okay, well, maybe that's... Who knows? I mean, we're getting another season of Discovery. We're supposed to be getting Section 31. We're supposed to be getting another season of Star Trek Lower Decks. There's still supposed to be that Strange New World show with Captain Pike. Right. 
And there's another one called Star Trek Prodigy that's supposed to be another, I believe it's animated one, that where they're going to have Janeway come back and play Admiral Janeway. Okay. Yeah, so... A lot of stuff coming. I mean, they're supposed to be. So, I mean, who knows? Like, but that would be my guess. Um, so, remember, I had said I thought that he, this 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 guy had to be something like the Q because he had to be something yeah, that was as powerful right. enough to. And said, sure yeah. enough, it was the Guardian of Forever. Now, I I always assumed, based on what they had established for the Guardian before, was that 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 rock and the planet it was on, and it was just that was not able to move. They've that's something they've added, I guess, to it. But, I mean, they never really went into depth on what it was no. in the original, just that it was a gateway to other times and places. They never really... They didn't go into any too big yeah. any elaboration on it, So this is it, no. actually basically says that it's like a sentient portal, or whatever, that can move around. Move around, yeah. Stuff. So, who knows? But in one sense, I was kind of right. It had to be somebody powerful like a Q to be able to do that. Yeah. And it was. So, anyway. So yeah. then she's gone. So that's the last we see of her, and uh, yeah. of course, um, we uh, we go back to the discovery, and of course, they're um, toasting her and whatever. But you know, yeah, uh, that was kind of weird. Well, Concerned, was, yeah. none of them liked her, but then all of a sudden they all did. Like whatever. Uh, but um, on the you know the the conversation that um, Saru was having with the admiral, eh? The admiral was really kind of coming down on him. Mm -hmm. Pretty tough. Yeah, for sure. Here, you want to uh, throw this over? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, <clears throat> but, I, you know, I thought it was... I thought it was... Uh, it, it was It was an okay episode. Um, I, I'm... I've never really been a fan of the way Discovery has handled the Mirror Universe anyway. Well, you said that. But so I would have preferred that they hadn't done that at all. You know, just... I mean, well, where the hell could they have taken it? But I mean, Christ. You know, I mean... Anyway. It's done, so yeah. follow. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it's like when you go all the way back to season one, right? Lorca, right? It was from the Mirror Universe. Yep. As we lear we've learned. That's right. And for him to have been captain of the discovery all through season one and act like this good, honorable, whatever. Like that is so outside the scope of what a Terran would be able to do at that point that it, that that's, that's why I say like just the whole way they had handled the mirror universe in this show since the beginning has not been great with me. Um, but I always thought we were going to see Lorca come back. I always thought we were going to see the real Lorca come back or the, the, the prime universe one come back, but you know, never did. But anyway, well, so, but yeah, I, I was like you, I, I kind of, like you said, uh, you feel it was a filler. Yeah. Yeah. I felt uh, it kind of feels like a filler to me too. Like, it's just like, we're okay. Well, they, they figured out what's happening. Now they're going to solve the problem of the burn. But, well, it took long enough. Like, yeah, to me, that was, it was like mm. this, this, you know, terra firma one and two was just a filler to get to yeah. where they need to be. Yeah, and uh, basically just to write her out of the show. Yeah, more or less. To wherever she's going to be for her own show. So. Yeah, that's that's what it came across to me. It wasn't, you know, like the rest of them, but, you know. Yeah. It was just the breadcrumbs <clears throat> and the meatloaf to me, just to keep it, you know. Yep. Give it a bit yep, of taste and a bit of whatever. So uh, hopefully they'll get on to something, uh, you know, now that they've done that. Let's, you know. Yeah, I agree. Let's hope. Let's hope. Yep. Um I was still enjoying it. Don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, I did but, too. I mean, because I think know. season three has been vastly better than the last two. Yeah. And I liked season two better than one. Yeah. So as, as far as I'm concerned, the show has been getting better. But like any Star Trek, uh, that's that's just the way it tends to be. The first season or two is is always rough. And then by the third one, it's usually they're into their stride and they're starting to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've used the, the term about, you know, with Back to the Future, you know, from one to two being the filler and back into three doing it. I mean, that's the bridge in between. Yeah. It's just the, you know, you got to take that road to get to where you need to be. And that's sort of what I'm thinking now, this way. But, you know. I had, I had talked on a vlog about um, some of the people You've on, on YouTube who are um, always coming down on, like, 
Star Trek and Star Wars and everything, they're always, always, always hammering on it. And one of them that I mentioned was uh, uh, Doomcock from uh, the YouTube channel Overlord DVD. I watched a video of his this week, and he he was – he was saying that uh, we now know that Discovery is not actual Star Trek. It's it's J.J. Abrams' Star Trek from the other time. And I'm like, mm, obviously you didn't watch the episode properly because it doesn't say that Discovery is from that. The guy that they showed in that Next Generation era Star, Starfleet uniform he was from the J.J. Abrams universe who crossed over to the Prime universe. It wasn't that Discovery was, like, so... He, you missed he, it? He missed it. Like, he goes off like he's this, like, guy that seems to know everything or think he knows everything, but... I mean, holy frig, buddy. Like, you've got to get your... you got to get your facts right. Like, you didn't listen to the episode. You didn't... No. Missed the boat on that, I guess. Did, yeah, yeah, like... No, Discovery is Star Trek. It's real Star Trek, like Prime Universe Star Trek. Otherwise, they wouldn't be referring to the universes as Prime and Mirror, Prime and Mirror, because the other is the Kelvin timeline, and that one is not it. So, anyway. There you go, dude. You missed it. Yeah. So, perhaps Doomcock, you should turn your ears on a little bit better. Anyway, uh... That said, overall, like, I'm with you. I think it was a filler. Yeah. I think there's probably going to only be three or four episodes left. What? That was 10, so there'd be 11, 12, probably 13. Yeah. They only, usually only have 13, so we're probably looking at three more episodes. Well, good. Let's hope it just... My guess is they're going to probably f- have some encounter with the uh, the Emerald Chain again before the end of the show, and uh, they're going to probably learn something about the burn and how it was caused, or maybe how, how it happened to... Uh, all together, who knows? You but. still say Michael caused it, though. I still think she's the cause of it, yeah. yeah. I think it was the red angel suit. Well, let's see if we find out then. You know, so anyway, that 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 is what it is, everybody. So, um, yeah, leave your comments below about what you guys thought. Were you guys just blown away with how Mandalorian ended? I know I was. Definitely. I was just super excited. I'm hoping that this means that in the Lando uh, series that's coming that we get to see uh, a young Luke Skywalker in that as well because him and Lando did remember Lando said that in episode 9 that him and Luke had traveled the galaxy for a while doing things wow that's um, yeah I'm okay. hoping that that's uh, well, maybe that'll that's be another happens. way yep. yeah you never know I mean it might not be but I'm hoping uh, that said we'll see you guys for another episode next week uh, well actually that depends I'm not sure if Discovery is going to air this week because with Mandalorian gone and this week being Christmas. It might not. Discovery yeah. usually airs on Thursdays here in Canada. Yeah. So that means that would be Christmas Eve. I don't know if we'll see one Christmas Eve here. Yeah, might not be. Anyway, uh, okay. You can review a burning glass on TV. Just, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, just, um, you know, uh, it, check back, of course. You know, it will, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully we'll have something. If it's not. If, if it's, it's not, we'll post a little video update on and put it on YouTube just to say, you know, when we know it's coming back and when we're going to be back yeah, for the next we'll, episode. We'll, we'll give you something to let you know what's going um, on, you know. In the meantime, in case it doesn't, everybody, you know, hope you just have a wonderful, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas. And That's right. Happy Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Stuff. Whatever. And we will catch you guys for the next episode. Don't forget, leave your comments below, like, subscribe. And uh, check out all bell, of our, yeah, click up the notification bell and check out our other videos. We've got so many really cool Jersey ham videos. And of course, All in the so Pen much more starts coming. January 9th. Yep. That is our first episode of All in the Pen. So uh, check that out. You're really going to get a good chuckle out of it. We'll talk to you then. Have a good one, guys. See you then. <laughs>